Okay, let's <clears throat> let's go through sample problem 3.5. I'll try to do this quite quickly. So we've got a uniform 7 meter steel shaft. It has a mass of 200 kilograms. And is supported by a ball and socket joint at A. Uh, in the horizontal floor. And the ball <coughs> end B is at rest. At rest against a smooth vertical wall. Uh, as shown, two, two smooth vertical walls. Compute the forces exerted by the walls and the floor. Okay, so step one, free body diagram. So now we're dealing with a three-dimensional problem and we have smooth walls here. So how are we going to replace that? Okay, so Remember, we've got a certain kind of support reaction, and then we replace it with a force in our free body diagram. And so if we've got a smooth surface, then all we do is re replace it by a normal force. So can you see that there's a smooth surface there, and the normal force would be there. So um, we choose X in this direction, Y in that direction, and Z in that direction. So that's BY, it's a normal force. There's no friction, so there won't be any tangential force. Similarly, we have BX, uh, so there's a force acting in the X direction, BX, okay, so make sure that you understand that part. Then we've got a ball and socket, here's a ball and socket joint, remember, if you replace the, that, uh, that reaction, that support, then you have to replace it with the forces that it could potentially cause, and that resists motion in the X, Y, and the Z, but it does not resist any rotation, so you don't put in a moment there. Okay, are you happy with that? Also, because we're dealing with a body force and the mass is not negligible, we have to include the mass. So, there's also a force acting on this member of what? The force is the weight equal to mg, which is 200 times 9.81, 1962. That's the weight, but where do you put it? Well, um, I, I think I've said it before, that in chapter 5, we are going to look at exactly how to identify the exact location of our center of mass, center of gravity, all those kinds of things. For now, uh, we just say, well, they give us it's uniform, which means that the, the mass is evenly distributed. And so we just then assume that the center of gravity is at literally the center of the beam. Okay? So if it says uniform, just put it, put calculate the total weight of that object and then put it at the at the center if it says uniform. Okay, so we'll get to that in a minute exactly where it is. Um but it's, it's halfway up. So if this is 7 meters, then that's at 3.5. That's at 3.5 there. Okay, so now we've got our free body diagrams. I mean, di diagram. Don't forget to put in also the dimensions. 2, 6, and and H. Okay? So just read through this and see, and, and see how you figure out that H equals 3. Okay? Just go through this yourself. Pause it and make sure that you understand how this height is equal to 3. What is the big picture now? The big picture is we're trying to find BX, BY, AX, AY, and AZ. And we've got these guys. Some of the moments are equal to 0. Okay? And some of the forces equals 0. So, let's start off with, let's do what they do. We want to take moments. Well, we're in equilibrium, so, so these equations hold and we want to take moments about a certain point now remember we we advise that you take moments about a point that has the most unknowns because then in the equation these unknown forces would be eliminated so if we take moments about point a then ax a1 az don't cause moments because they pass through that point but then we've got bx by and the weight those three forces will cause moments about A. Uh, why? Because they're not on the line of action. Right? So, uh, we know that 
a moment is r cross f and what is r it is a position vector from the point of rotation to any point along the line of action okay so we've got we need a moment we need a position vector from a to a point along the line of action of b x and b y which is b so what is a position vector a b well again a position vector is how do i move from a to b can you see that if I move from A to B, I need to go minus 2, minus 2. In the X, I need to go minus 6 in the Y, and plus 3 in the X direction. So there's my RAB, minus 2, I, minus 6J, plus 3K. Go negative X, negative Y, plus K. Right, there's my RAB, and that position vector is good enough for both of those forces. And the second one is I need to get a position vector from A to G. And because it's halfway, uh, halfway between A and B, all I do is I, I say, okay, well, that's minus 2, so that's minus 1. That's minus 6, so that's minus 3. I'm just dividing by 2. All right? So the position vector from A to G is just given by that halfway half of these components okay so now let's let's calculate the moments sum of the moments about a equals zero so we've got r a b cross b x plus r a b cross b y okay because those are two moments but if you want to simplify it you can just go r a b cross b x plus b y because they both have the same position vector. And then you can say RAG cross W. Remember, all of these have to be converted into vector form. Right? So as you can see, BX, BY, and the weight are not in vector form. You need to convert them to vector. So this will be BX, I. BY, J. That's what we've done there. You convert them into vector form. Okay, so there's your position vector. There's your BX and BY in vector form. There's your position vector for uh, the weight. But then you have to convert that weight into vector form. Guys, this is very, very important. We've got the magnitude of that weight, 1962 Newton, 1962. But we see that it's acting in the negative Z direction. So we must go minus 1962K. Now everything is nicely in vector form. You carry out the cross product. Okay, see if you you can do this. Tr try to do this on your own. Right? You cross out the, the column of I. First of all, you write I. You open your brackets. You cross out that column. Cross out that row. And you, go, you do this motion. Remember, that times that minus that times that. It's got that kind of motion, right? Minus 6 times 0 is 0. Minus 3 times by. And that's what we have there. Now they've grouped the i's, the j's, and the k's here. So they then jump here, and they do this one. And they got minus 3 times minus 1,962, which is that, 5890. Minus 1.5 times 0, which is 0. So they've grouped the i's over here, and then they do the same with the j's, and the k's. All right. And then, because we know that some of the moments about x equals 0, some of the moments about y is 0, some of the moments about z is 0, all we do is we take that, we equ equate that to 0. We set that guy to 0, and we set that guy to 0. And we solve for our bx and our by. So please go do that. Set this to 0 and solve for by. Set that to 0 and solve for bx. Okay, so now you've got BX and BY. You've got these two components, those two forces. Now we want to solve for these guys. Now we can go sum of the forces um, equals zero. And again, we say, what are all the forces acting in the X direction? We've got bx so this is that is a positive x direction that's the positive y and that's the positive z 
So BX is 654 minus AX, which is, which is unknown. And we set that equal to zero, and we solve for AX. Then we've got what's happening in the Y direction. We've got BY, which is 1962, so it's positive. What are all the forces in the Y? Minus AY. And we solve for AY. <clears throat> then we also solve for AZ in the same way. AZ minus weight. AZ minus the weight is zero. So we set that to zero and we solve for AZ. And we can also calculate the the resultant, the magnitude of AX, of, of A, right, by doing this. Okay guys, so this is a three-dimensional problem. First step is free body diagram. Make sure that you understand this table. You replace all the supports with their, their proper forces. And then we carry out some of the moments and some of the forces equal to zero. And always remember, remember guys, that in three-dimensional um, problems, it is so much easier. It might look more difficult, but it's actually a lot easier. And sometimes it's the only way is to convert into these vector forms. Okay? And not to, you can do a scalar method. So I haven't gone through exactly this, but um, you can go through this also on your own make, to see if you can use a scalar solution. All right, guys.